Now, I know because you listen to this show, you love Chicago. In fact, you probably know your community very well. Maybe you're involved in a block club or some other neighborhood organization because you're passionate about the place you live. Well, you might be able to turn that passion into a profession, helping others find neighborhoods that they love with a career in real estate. When you earn your license with Realtors Real Estate School, you'll have access to a community of real estate professionals who can offer guidance and mentorship. Learn how you can get started this summer. Visit realtorsrealestateschool.com slash begin. What's up? So if you like me, living green and reducing your food waste is probably a little hard and complicated, right? But it doesn't have to be. Not when we're using Waste Not. Waste Not is an at-home composting service, and it's pretty simple. They give you a clean bucket, you put your food, scraps, paper products, and compostables in, then they come pick it up in like a week or two later, and they give you a whole new clean bucket. So give Waste Not a try at home. Check out wastenotcompost.com, plus our City Cash Chicago listeners can test the service with a free month by using promo code CityCastCompost, all one word. Today on City Cash Chicago, Chicago public school students are back in the classroom this week. So how is it going? Plus, we're talking forthcoming school board elections and we're stopping by Roseland for some lemonade. Helping me break it all down from WBEZ, the race class and community editor, Natalie Moore and Chalk B Chicago's education reporter, Samantha Smiley. It's Friday, August 30th. I'm Jacoby Cochran and this is what Chicago is talking about. Morning, my friends. Happy to have y'all back on the mic. Natalie, how you feeling today? I'm good. Good morning. Glad to be here. Always good to have you. You got a book you six, seven weeks out in advance, and I'm glad I did it. Uh, it's good to see you. Always good to see you. Samantha, it's great to have you back, my friend. How you doing today? It's good to be here. It's good to see you again. If you are new to CityCast Chicago, every single Friday, we like to bring in these amazing voices from across the city to talk about some of the big stories that were happening, some stories they want to put us on. And we end every single episode the same way. And that's with some good news. I don't usually sing it that early, but uh, it's a good Friday. I got some great friends in the building. Uh, before we get into the big stories, earlier this week, we did a like Chicago symbols battle, like an icon battle. We looked at some of the, like if you think of Chicago, what are the, the things that pop into your head? Now, this wasn't an exhaustive list. We just did a quick elite eight bracket, but I want to run y'all through some of the battles to see if we was on the same page. Y'all cool with that? If I just go through some of the lists with y'all? Yeah, let's do it. Yep. All right. So we we did a big debate back and forth, but I'm going to just go rapid fire with y'all. 90s Bulls or 85 Bears? Who y'all got? 90s Bulls. Oh, that's a tough one. I mean, we all love that warm up <sighs> song, but there's something about the Super Bowl shuffle. Did, did you see Ray Wood Jr. talk about how cocky that he broke down that song? Like who writes a song about winning the Super Bowl uh-huh. before? They actually win uh-huh. before, before they, they play. Do it. <laughs> so I, I'm 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 gonna go with. So we're not saying the same thing. I'm gonna go with the Super Bowl shuffle. Okay, you're going 85 Bears. See, in that first round, I argued 85 Bears too. All right, so the Bean versus Sears Tower. I just <laughs> I I can see somebody who's a tourist saying the Bean, <laughs> but it's it's the Sears Tower. It's like hands down. I feel you. I feel you, <laughs> Natalie. Bean Sears Tower. I'm going to go with Sears Tower, too. Okay. Hot dog versus deep dish. Hot dog. Oh, I'm going to go deep dish. <laughs> Come on, Samantha. We on the same page. Why are we even talking about deep dish? It should be tavern style, <laughs> not deep dish. But that's the symbol that people grab. Okay. Is, it's the okay. it's the both inside and outside of it. It's, it's complicated. It's a complicated relationship. I picked deep dish, too, in that early, compl- in that early contest. Even when I was in London... Um, years ago, like some guy was like, Oh, where are you from? And I was like, He ain't gonna know where I'm from. And so I said, Oh, I'm from Chicago. He was like, Deep dish. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Fine. I was like, I was like, All right. All right. <laughs> That's that is what we know for. <laughs> J- Jacoby, as a do or die Chicagoan, I'm gonna challenge you to go beyond some of these symbols because. Hey, I. 
It wasn't an exhaustive list. I feel you. I just mean, like, during the DNC, I was like, if I hear one more thing about a hot dog <laughs> or deep dish, like, the battle should, between, should be between mild sauce and Uncle Remus sauce. Like, let's, mm-hmm. let's get into no, I, how I, we I, live. I agree. I think it should be between the the uh, Italian beef and the sweet steak. But we mm-hmm. were, I think it was part because of the DNC. It was like, okay, these symbols... Do we all agree on them in Chicago? Like, how how do people outside of Chicago see them? And so it was this interesting battle we were having. Uh, and then the last first round was House versus Drill. House all day long. I feel like I feel like House, but Drill is having a moment. You know what I mean? Like, like it started in Chicago, and now I see like the New York City kids getting into it, and the London <laughs> folks getting into it. But it's but I'm always like, we started it all. Samantha, your heart is telling you how. <laughs> I know because that's like one thing I know for sure. People immediately say Chicago. I feel like if you say drill music, somebody's going to be like, oh, you're talking about New York City. And it's like, no, mm-hmm. that started here. But. But I just I feel like house. <laughs> we not gonna run through the whole battle. But if you are listening and you got thoughts, you don't think these all should have been in the original eight bracket. If you're telling us we need to do a part two, let us know at 773-780-0246. Let us know who you think should have won the Chicago icon bracket. This week across Chicago, tens of thousands of students were back in the classroom. Yes, during one of the hottest weeks of the summer, no less. Uh, Sam, you and all your colleagues over at Chalkbeat Chicago, not only are you covering the big stories across our education landscape, like a forthcoming school board election, but you all were also there at schools across the city just seeing, you know, how did it go? Everything from bus rides to air conditioning. So, you know, from your vantage point, what did the first day of school look like across the district? So I would have to give all the credit to my colleagues because they were the ones that was outside. I'm the state reporter, so I could stay inside <laughs> and just and feel phone calls and Facebook messages. And I think it was just like a mixed kind of first day, first week experience for folks. Like a lot of kids excited to go back to school to see their friends, of course. But then at the same time, you have people who um, a lot of families who didn't even know about their busing route could not get transportation services, especially like children with disabilities. Again, like again, the same group of kids that we know have been struggling for years to get transportation, even though they are federally like they they have to get that, right? Like mm-hmm. we know it's the federal law that they have to get transportation, especially if it's in their um individualized education um programs. I feel like we've had this exact same conversation the last two first days of schools in a row, not including this one. Every year, every year I come here and say, yeah, (laughs) transportation hasn't gotten better, you all. And everybody's like, well, how do we, we need more bus drivers. Like, Mm -hmm. I just, I think that's it. We, there's, there's a need for more bus drivers and it's not just Chicago. It is the, the state and it is, you know, the nation too, that's dealing with the same shortage, but it's just that, you know, there's a lack of service for uh, general ed- education kids who are going to magnet and selective enrollment school. And then for students with IEPs, like we have seen some of those kids being routed, but then they have like super long routes. You know, the yellow school bus is hot. Like, especially <laughs> like, I mean, on a 90 degree day, can you imagine sitting on one of those seats? Like, just like, I you know, trying to. <laughs> I remember I those days too. That was the show. Um, so we have all we have those things going on all at the same time, and I don't know when it's going to get better. I know I still have parents who are like, I don't know what's going to happen with transportation for the next few weeks, and I don't know about transportation stipends, and you know, it just yeah, it was yeah. good and then chaotic for other families. My daughter has never had bus service, and. She goes to selective enrollment and is supposed to, but we just don't even think about it. Like that ship has sailed Wow! and the school is, is near our house. So, you know, we, we are fine. My brother was a school bus driver and they talked about like he would get, you know, a, not a bonus, but a referral fee if he got someone. I think one of the challenges with finding people is, I believe that if you had an arrest record, even if from 20 years ago, nonviolent, like they are eliminating a pool of people 
So I think CPS should maybe look at um, what the criteria, like what are some roadblocks that mm-hmm. are preventing people from from getting these jobs. That's a great point. Natalie, you wear so many hats, reporter, professor, parent. And right now there feels like there's a palpable tension in the room, not necessarily the classroom, but just in this space, right? Teachers are still fighting for a new contract. The CEO of CPS is maybe looking over his shoulder. We're still having conversations about, you know, pension payments. Like there's so much going on right now. And the focus on first day of school isn't always in the classroom, though. What do you think, what are you watching going into this school year? First day of school, you know, was lit for me because our <laughs> our principal is amazing. She always has a breakfast for the parents. She talks about the school year, the goals, the fun stuff. So, you know, my daughter's got her fit ready, doesn't really want to walk with me. Um, catching up with her friends. You you at that point now where they don't want she doesn't want to walk with you. She's acting like a tween, even though she's eight and has a locker. So I I do like the first day of school. Like the policy will be there, the budget, all of that stuff. But it is nice to just get out and see what people are are doing. I would say what I'm looking for, you know, so our our school got a reduction in um, money for after school programming. And this is part of, you know, putting some equity in our system. My daughter goes to a classical school. It's well resourced. She has true music education, like a music teacher. Uh, she gets language, um, all these am- amazing things. And the school is 90% Black. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not upset that there was a reduction hmm. in the funding. I mean, Ideally, there should not be a reduction. But if we truly want an equitable system, we're going to have to. And I, I want the neighborhood school to have some of the bells and whistles that my daughter has. And I think this is going to continue to play out. And it's going to be a long journey. With um, I don't know. I mean, Samantha, what is the next step with this new funding formula? Yeah, I think we're we're still looking into that as well as how, um, like what's what's the next thing to go with this. I know we need to like reach back out to some of the schools that we heard from who were like we're getting hit with reductions, but also to talk to the schools to see if actually anybody got any gains, right? Because that's the right. that's the one question I have. Like we do have limited resources across the board, and you can kind of redistribute them but kind of not because it's not enough um and so that i feel like that's my question in general like do do people actually are people actually seeing gains in their yeah is there a school that got a new paraprofessional is there a school that got a part-time uh you know art teacher you know what whatever that is that would seem small maybe to another school and then there are so many schools that fundraise sarah carp and i did a big project a couple of years ago that talked about, you know, a lot of schools in the North, I mean, they're raising tens of thousands of dollars. They're having galas and that's another form of inequity. So the schools that have, you know, upper middle-class parents, they're going to fill in those, those gaps. My school, I would say is mixed income. Like there are higher earning parents. There are city workers that are there. Uh, I mean, I don't know everyone's profile, but even though it's a selective enrollment school, but we're not having galas. You know us, we've always got the next festival you gotta check out. And this Labor Day weekend is Taste of Polonia Festival 2024 at the Copernicus Center in Jefferson Park. It's the biggest and oldest Polish festival in the US with over 60 performers and dozens of merchants across four days and four stages. Go on and celebrate Polish culture with classic food and beer and bring the whole family. They're going to have a kid stage in the jumping zone for the little ones. You can even catch stars from Poland like DJ Berka, Krzysztof Sugowski, and Junior Stress. Taste of Polonia is August 30th through September 2nd. You can get your tickets today at topchicago.org.
One thing I've learned during this podcast is that every Chicagoan has an artist deep inside of them, even if they don't know it. Now I'm serious. All of us should get a chance to unleash our creative side in the greatest city in the world. And if you like Kobe, where do I start? I got you. Art City is a gateway to the visual arts in Chicago. It's run by independent local artists and you can either check out their classes or head over to their gallery, but maybe the best place to start, a classic paint and sip class. An expert will guide you through painting a beautiful piece of art that you get to take home, all while sipping on whatever you like to sip on. So bring a friend, bring a drink, and bring out your inner artist. Head to artcityshy.com to sign up for a paint and sip class. And while Art City's prices are already great, you can get a discount with code five off. That's the number five off. I got the website for you again, artcityshy.com. Samantha, one thing that is going to have a real impact on this conversation moving forward is what our school board looks like. Yeah. So, you know, I've been following this story since 2021 and I know other folks have been following it much longer, right? Waiting to get a, a bill passed for this elected school board. You know, we're going into the hybrid school board first. So we only have 10 seats that are up for election this time in June when the deadline hits you for candidates to send in their petitions with the signatures you know so for people who are like what does that even mean um you know those random people who was like probably at your grocery store asking you to sign a petition (laughs) those were the candidates um (laughs) and those petitions that they had asked you to sign those were challenged and there are people saying like hey actually this person don't even live in this district you know Or let's check the handwriting. Let's do this, right? And we had 47 people who filed. And now we're about like 30, 33, 32 people. There were some candidates who just, when they got challenged, they immediately jumped out the race because they knew they didn't have the time or the money to get a lawyer. There were some people who stayed and and tried to fight, but they did not have enough signatures, um, enough valid signatures to, to meet the minimum requirement um, and there's some people who actually won their challenges. So, and and those are kind of the people who will be on the ballot come November. So that's what we're seeing. Natalie, this has been a long time coming. I mean, Chicago having a fully elected school board. Uh, what are your hopes going into this? My biggest concern has been, you know, is it going to be accessible to everyone? Is it going to become another big money election in our city? I'm not sure how it shakes out top to bottom, but um, I'm not sure those concerns have been completely wiped out. They haven't. I would say people need to temper their expectations. I get the philosophical argument of representation in Chicago being the only place that doesn't get to elect its school board in the state. I also think that this is seen as an anecdote that is going to solve all these problems in Chicago public Uh schools. And that's not how I see it because of the way politics work. Who's, I think you're going to have voting, you're going to have blocks of special interest who are going to be putting up candidates. You're going to have, I mean, the charter school movement is very well resourced. Um, And People who want privatization, they're going to put candidates up. Chicago Teachers Union is going to put candidates up. Um, I think the spirit, and all of that, of course, is legal. The spirit of this, I think, is that people have wanted just representation and to be able to elect. But we know that in our democracy, that's not how things always work. It's about money. It's about access even getting on the ballot, like you said, I'm at the farmer's market and I see people trying to, to get signatures. So again, just tempering expectations, this, a, a a new school board, I don't think is demonstrably going to change the outcome of decisions that are, that are made at headquarters. To learn more about the school board districts, find out which one you live in, the people who are running in your district, please follow our friends over at Chalk Beach Chicago. They've even created an interactive map to help us all out. Natalie, a fun story I saw earlier this week felt as 
summertime shy as any festival happening and that's a lemonade stand in roseland with the lee sisters they were raising money not just this week but they have been raising money for different causes everything for raising money for saint jude's to now raising money for the sky tickets to see the indiana fever versus the sky this friday man can you tell us a little bit more about the lee sisters i just love it jade and joy lee 12 and 11 set up a lemonade stand on the corner of 111th and Princeton, as you said, in the Roseland neighborhood with the goal of raising $700 because they want to go to a Chicago Sky game. And they wanted to go to that, to the Barbie night with the Indiana Fever, you know, showdown with Angel Reese of the Sky and Caitlin Clark of Indiana Fever. But then they received this gift of $2,000 uh-huh. <laughs> from a philanthropist to go to the game and to ride in the limo with their mom. You know, what I love about this story is that, yes, it's a feel-good story, but it's it's deeper than that. I mean, what kid, you know, kids lemonade stand? Is that news? In this case, I think so. Because one, I love that it's in Roseland. And so many times when we hear about South and West Side neighborhoods, this is the lens of violence. And here are these two young girls who are having some moxie. I mean, my daughter said to me the other day, can you buy me a Stanley Cup? No. What if I pay you? You don't have any money. What if I do a lemonade stand? Girl, all right, you're in school (laughs) now. But, you know, there's still something about nostalgic and entrepreneurship. Like, I want something. I'm going to do this lemonade stand. And that is timeless. Um, And then the other element is the sky. Like, this is the hottest ticket in town. I went to a Sky game this week, there are no bad seats. We had great seats. Mm-hmm. And just to see Angel, like, you just feel like you're so close. The vibe is, I mean, I think the vibe is better than the Bulls game. It's a lot of kids that are there, a lot of women. And, you know, and I just love that women's sports. It had been getting attention. It's not like these WNBA NBA games were, you know, empty. But mm-hmm. there are, there is some renewed interest that's there. And so, yeah, I just, this is my story of the week. The budget will always be there. The drama, (laughs) you know, CPS, the city, you know, corruption. (laughs) But this is just so Chicago. Yeah. Not only did they get the $2,000 donation earlier in the week, but then on Wednesday, the chief marketing officer, host of the Chicago Sky and the new mascot, Sky the Lioness, pulled up on 111th and Princeton and gave Jay and Joy four tickets to Friday's game. And they said they're going to get full VIP treatment uh, when they go to the game. That is so dope. And I, I really loved, I saw a video from Gene earlier this week. My friend Darius sent it to me and that's the first time I saw the story. Uh, and just listening to their grandfather talk about them as well and how proud he was of them because he said this was their idea. They wanted to raise money for these different causes. They wanted to raise money for this game. They talked about how Angel Reese uh, was their hero and they really wanted to go out and support. And like you said, that momentum that we've seen this entire season of the Chicago sky shows that energy is still here. It's still carried through. People are still happy to see this franchise grow, uh, see these players out in the city. Um, and so it, it's just been so cool to to watch this entire year uh, go down. And I'm excited for the Lee sisters to be in the building. And hopefully we tie up this season series. Right now the Fever got two games to one on the sky. I'm hoping we can lock up at two to two. And I just love how the mother <laughs> told them uh that she, that she was on board to take them till she saw the tickets. I mean, that's just like a universal, you know, mom thing. Like you want to do for your kids, but do you do you have to? I mean, two hundred dollars a pop for a family of three. You got Chicago Sky money. What? You yeah, got McDonald's money. You got what? McDonald's money. You got Stanley Cup money. You got <laughs> Sky money. <laughs> like there's the. There's that universal mom no thing that's there or you got to earn it, girls. Every single episode of City Cash Chicago ends not only with me begging you to come back the next day for you to subscribe to our Hey Chicago newsletter, for you to follow our guests and all of the great work that they do. But every episode also ends with some good news. 
news. This could be an event coming up this weekend, something personal, something you just want to share with CityCast listeners. Sam, what is your good news for our CityCast listeners today? Yeah, during this three-day weekend, um, thank God that we have it. <laughs> I will be hanging out with some friends um, and hanging out with my family. I think I might have to drag my best friend to the yarn store with me because I'm currently in the process of crocheting a bunch of little like a blanket and some toys and hats and, and footies for my sister's newborn um, who is expected to join us in October. So I she might have to come with me to do, to do that. But other than that, that's, I'm just chilling. <laughs> Hey, Labor Day weekend, I'm probably going to pull up on mom, sit in the backyard, get down some barbecue. I hear you. Natalie, what about you? What is your good news today? Well, it's good news. It's also bittersweet. I am leaving WBEC to go teach journalism full time at Northwestern University and run their audio program. So I'll be calling on you to talk to students. <laughs> I, and I will be there. But tell tell me more. I mean, moving more like full time in that direction. How, how does that feel for you? I'm still a little bit in denial. I can't imagine not being in the daily grind. Um, as the dean told me, he said, I hope you don't think you're leaving journalism. I'll still have my Sun Times column. I'll still work on projects. You'll hear me pop up and be like, I thought she was gone. So I'm you know, going to keep my foot, toe you know, in the, in the door, um, locally, but yeah, I mean, helping train the next generation of journalists, also helping a new generation think about our industry. You know, this is election season. I think there's a lot to mine in the run up to November. I'm excited. I, you know, have, I'll be crying this week. And, uh, it's a lot of tears, I've been at WBEZ for 17 years and, you know, it's a, it's the end of an era. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate every time you've come on uh, over the last few years. And I know just know we still going to be bringing you in here uh, to watch movies with us, listen to old school Chicago records, talk the news of the week. My good news this week, one, the Chicago Labor Day Parade is taking place this Saturday down in Pullman to immediately be followed by the Eddie Fest. And so please, if you got time, get down there. But then just something I am personally excited for, the Taste of Chicago is next weekend. But I didn't realize until just yesterday that John B. going to be there on Friday performing at 6 p.m. And I don't know about y'all, but Cool Relax from John B. dropped in 1997. My late father played that album from front to back nonstop over and over to the point that when I re-listened to it, I knew almost every word to the entire album. Uh, I ain't never seen John B. perform uh, and so I'm excited for the Taste of Chicago, not only for the 90 plus vendors that are going to be out there. Shout out to them being a City Cash Chicago sponsor. But I'm really plugging in because I, I, I don't know. I told my brother and we almost we, we just had like this flashback moment. It was this moment of sitting in our father's truck listening to that at like seven, eight years old. My brother being forced to like sing the runs and I just do Tupac's part in the back, just like karaoke in the car. Are, 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 are you going to, you know, you love to sing. Can we get a little John B from you as we head out? I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about if I could do that today. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. But I'm going to be singing John B all next Friday out at the taste. Uh, don't, don't put me on the spot though. Don't, okay. don't put me on the spot. All right. All right. <laughs> They don't know. All right, all right, all right. That's what Let I was hoping for. That's Let enough. me keep pushing. That's <laughs> I got to give a huge thank you to our guest today from Chalk Beach, Chicago. Y'all make some noise for Samantha Smiley. Samantha, thank you for being here today. No problem. Thanks for having me again. Always a pleasure, Sammy. And WBEZ and Northwestern's Natalie Moore. Thank you. 
Before we get out of here, I also got to thank the people who make CityCast Chicago and Hey Chicago possible. Our executive producer is Simone Alisea. Our producer is Michelle Navarro. Our Hey Chicago newsletter editor is Sydney Madden. Our roving producers this week were Elizabeth Kama and Zoe Koken. Our roving newsletter editor is Adrian Gonzalez. The music we all love is from Sam Thousand, All the Kimonos, and Mark Greenberg from the Mayfair Workshop. And my last thank you as it is every single episode is for you, the people who keep coming back to City Cash Chicago after three years and 870 plus episodes. Oh, seriously, it means a lot to us. And if you are new to the program, we hoping to have another 870 plus. So, hey, you, you, you got some road ahead of you, some road behind you. Get in on our catalog. It's already fire. So I'm going to keep getting better. We're going to be back bright and early on Tuesday. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend. I'll talk to you then. Peace. You are the only one when I'm not around. Do you think of me? I'm going to be out there, y'all. Oh, what the jealous ones are to me.